window. I know how you feel. Today we're going to be taking a look at function transformations by graphing parabolic functions. Brought to you by MathRhythm.com. Now, what would you do if you were given y equals this mess? Well, don't let those additional terms fool you. In fact, let's go ahead and get rid of them. Break this down to the simplest term you can think of, which is just that x squared term. After all, we know what y equals x squared looks like. It's simply a parabola with its vertex located at the origin. Using that x squared as a starting point, let's bring that plus 2 back in the parentheses. Any term inside the parentheses, where that power of 2 has an effect on, is going to be a horizontal shift, or a shift left or right. And it's a little different from what you might expect, meaning that a plus 2 is actually going to be a shift of 2 units to the left, whereas a negative 2 would have been a shift of 2 units to the right. Now let's go ahead and apply that shift and see what it looks like. Oh, sometimes these parabolas can be a little bit sticky. Let's break it loose and move it over there. Now that you know what an x plus 2 squared looks like, let's go ahead and bring that plus 5 back in the mix. Well, since you've discovered that a plus or minus inside the parentheses is associated with the x direction, or is a horizontal shift, that must mean that any addition or subtraction term outside the parentheses is associated with the y direction, or is a vertical shift. And it's quite literal, so a plus is up and a negative is down. That means that our plus 5 is a shift of 5 units upward. Now let's take a moment and reflect on what you've actually done so far. That green line represents the horizontal shift of the 2 units to the left. The orange line represents the shift upward of the 5 units vertically. And that yellow line completing the right triangle represents the combination of the horizontal and vertical shifts together. So we've moved our parabola upward to the left on a diagonal. Let's take a look at constant multipliers or constant coefficients now. To do this properly, we're going to need to break up the coefficient into the sign of the coefficient and the value of the coefficient. Any whole value is going to mean a stretch in the graph, meaning that the graph is going to get taller and skinnier. Any fractional component is going to make the graph shorter and fatter. So for our value of a 3, we're going to grab that graph and stretch it. And the area there in the yellow simply shows how each and every point on the graph has been stretched by that multiple of 3. Remember when I said we're going to break this up into the sign of the coefficient and the value of the coefficient? Well, let's bring that negative back on front and see what happens. A negative in front of a coefficient such as this simply means that the function is going to be downward facing. What it really means is it would be like holding a mirror at its point of symmetry. In the case of an x squared, that would be like holding a mirror at its vertex. In the case of an x cubed, that would be like holding a mirror at its point of inflection. But we'll get to that in a later video. So, for this function, we're going to go ahead and grab our parabola, rotate it up and through the vertex, and then set it back down again. So now, what was a minimum has now become a maximum. In other words, what was the lowest point has now become the highest point and our function is downward facing. Wow, that function has gotten pretty long and complicated. But don't worry, we're almost there, you're on the last step. Now let's squeeze a negative inside those parentheses and see what that does. Much like a negative outside the parentheses, a negative inside the parentheses is also going to be a reflection. But unlike a negative outside the parentheses, it's not going to be a reflection from a given point on the curve but rather a reflection across the y-axis, or about the y-axis. So it would be like holding a mirror at the y-axis and drawing each and every point from one side of the axis to the other side of the axis. So let's go ahead and grab our parabola, rotate it up and across the y-axis, and then set it back down again. Nice work, you've completed all of the transformations for this parabolic function. Now let's step back and see what you've actually done here today. The purple table and graph represent just a basic x squared term, just your run-of-the-mill parabola. The blue table and graph represent that mess we were given at the beginning of this video. So now you can see side by side all of those function transformations applied to the final parabolic function. If you've enjoyed this video, or at least found it helpful, you can find more videos like it at MathRhythm.com.